at this point we're gonna be uh, taking a kick start on the issues about the impeachment of uh, Philip Shaibo, uh, who was uh, the deputy governor of Edo State, youthful, vibrant, and a whole lot of persons will say that, well, it's going to be a big miss, you know, in that regard. But let's look at what degenerated to the extent where he had to be, you know, removed from office. And don't forget that uh, there was a judicial panel, seven-man judicial panel that was formed and that awaited, you know, his presence to uh, clear his name from the allegations leveled against him of perjury and disclosure of government secrets. But he was not around, neither was he represented. Uh, well, some have said that uh, the actions taken so far as regards even uh, making an impeachment process against him was quite uh, too much for him to bear or was quite too much for the democratic process. Again, some are also saying, is this the end of crisis for PDP? Uh, does it mean that uh, it's Uhuru? Or uh, are there still going to be some twist in the party? Uh, also, is it the end for uh, Right Honorable Philip Shaibu as regards his political career? Or uh, what will be done next? Well, we're going to be playing a clip in reaction of uh, Right Honorable uh, Philip Shaibu to the impeachment. And uh, we'll be right back after which we uh, look at what he said and uh, discuss the uh, issue in that regard. Do stay. Heavy heart, yet a resolute spirit, that I come before you to address the recent events that have unfolded within our dear state. I denounce in strongest term the illegal impeachment by the Edo State House of Assembly over Trump up charges. This is not just an attack on me as an individual, but on the very democratic principle that we hold there. It is a dangerous descent into dictatorship and a threat to the foundation of our democracy. Let it be clear that this impeachment was harsh because of my ambition to contest the Edo State 2024 governorship election under the People Democratic Party, PDP, an ambition that is a legal right to all citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's a sad reality that in our political landscape, ambition is meant with resistance, and those in power seek to silence opposition through illegitimate means. That was the reaction of Right Honorable um, Philip Shaibu, the former deputy governor of Edo State, and he said his uh, removal is illegal and it's an attack on democracy and a gradual descent to dictatorship. And uh, discussing this with me, uh, starting from my extreme left, I have a seasoned legal practitioner and a fine legal practitioner at that also a clergyman, and it is Greg Iyayi. Good to have you join me, Greg. Good morning, Philip. Good morning, viewers. Reverend Greg Iyayi is also a human rights activist and a social media influencer. Also joining us in this, uh, also have a legal practitioner, and uh, he is also a human rights activist in the person of Sunday Daudu. Thanks for coming, Sunday. Thank you very much. Although it's a Tuesday. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see what uh, is going on. Uh, we saw the clip and uh, the reactions of the from our deputy governor, mm, from our deputy governor of federal state, and uh, all that was said. I, I start with you, uh, Greg A whole lot has been said, and we're gonna be using that to embellish this show. Now he said that his removal was illegal. We understand that there was uh, a seven-man judicial panel set up of which waited for him to show up his presence or representation, which he never did. But that would have given him room to, you know, clear his name or something. But he said it's illegal and that it's an attack on democracy. Do you share in that light? Of course, he has a constitutional right to desire to be the governor of the state, irrespective of the position of um, uh, anyone or even if there is a zoning policy uh, but one cannot deny him that constitutional rights but 
whether it was appropriate or not is another issue. As for whether he, he had the legal right, he clearly had the legal right as a Nigerian to do so, to desire to be the governor of his state. So I, I do not see any problem with that. But again, uh, looking at the party's position or disposition uh, is another issue. But I don't think it was an offense for him to have desired to be the governor of uh, the state. It's an aspiration. Mm. Uh, and going to the pro primaries, you slog it up. Maybe you win, maybe you will not win. And then the people of the state decide whether you be their governor or not. So that is the issue uh, at play. Then on representation at the panel, I think his lawyer came up or appeared once. But after that, he did not appear and he was not represented. Well, the, the decision, that decision is best left to him mm. because he might be privy to some information we are not privy to. Mm. Thank you. Uh, let's, let's look at what he also said, uh, that um, it's an attack on democracy. And uh, gradually, uh, is also making the state to descend into dictatorship. Now, some have said that uh, from the onset, you know, uh, it, it seems the tables were turned deliberately to stop him from you know, continuing his ambition of becoming the flag bearer of the PDP. Do you feel so? Well, <clears throat> as a Democrat and a person who believes in the rule of law, which canvasses for fairness, equity, and justice, I will say without I without doubt that ordinarily it is not a turn of anybody from a donut to who aspire for the position of governor in the city. Is that what the provision of the law says? Is, We have agreed on rotational uh, governorship in the state, in principles. Because it will be a dangerous precedent if you continue to situate the governorship of a uh, state in one central district. Are you trying to say the reason why the table should be turned against him, for him not to well, survive no. that breadth of democratic uh, aspiration? Ordinarily, we have said it, it is not the turn of a donut. I'm from a donut. We're not saying it's the town or who is not the no, town. No, no, what I'm saying is that, what I'm saying is that ordinarily in politics. a level playing field in politics. to aspire. In politics. That's exactly what he was saying. In, in politics, sir. That he wasn't given a level playing field in, to aspire and also in, get a ticket. In politics, sir. Mm. There are a lot of factors that play out in politics. I agree that anybody can aspire for any position, from any zone. What I'm saying is it's not ideal. For a person from either I do north or I do south to aspire for the position now. That's what I'm saying. I'm, in the, I'm, in, I'm on ground. Or to, so, clean, to clean the ticket. To clean the ticket or even aspire if we want to even go by way of aspiration. It shouldn't even be. The position of the law in respect to your rights it has a limitation. Now let's leave that issue now and let's address the issue of his impeachment. And at the aspect of attack on democracy. And attack on democracy. The de democracy is premised on the rule of law. And what is rule of law? It's obedience to the rules of the game of parties, which is democracy. Now, allegations, whether frivolous, vexatious, made against the deputy governor in respect to forgery or perjury or whatever it is, the opportunity was given and to the disclosure of government secrets. Of government secret. the, gov the deputy governor has the opportunity to defend himself. He was given the opportunity? Yes. So, the principles of rule of law is of the view that once a person is aware or perceive that there are allegations made against him, he must avail himself the opportunity to defend himself, however few laws they are. So if in the first instance, the deputy governor did not avail himself to defend his, the allegation against him, it's a breach of the duties of rule of law, the principles of rule of law, for not even making yourself available in the first instance. But what about if he has the impression or he has seen the calculations that it, they were all processes deemed to the law, make the, him be impeached? The, the law, so maybe there's nothing he could have been able to do the, about the it. The law so has, that could also give him the reason to... Uh, the law uh, has speculations. The law has speculations. 
And speculation with respect to the process is prejudicial. What do I mean by that? The process of investigating the deputy governor may not culminate to his removal in the end. Because the allegation to me against the deputy governor, to me, is frivolous. What do you mean frivolous? It's frivolous because the argument against him was that he deposed on Afidobi where he alleged that he was denied of attending the ESCO committee. Is that a secret? Does that amount to disclosure of government? Does that amount to disclosure of government or, or, information? Are you, not, or are you not sure that it's even more than that? It is, it is not. Because that is what they have been done. They would have stated what he said. The deputy governor to me has not committed any offense, no to law. The deputy governor says in the affidavit that he was prevented from attending an ESCO meeting. Is that, an, is that a secret? Whereas we know too well that in those state, State Executive Council meeting is every Wednesday. And when State Executive meetings are held, they even brief the press on the outcome of the meeting. What makes it secret? Even the Federal Executive Council meeting. After the Federal Executive Council meeting, the Minister of Information or any other minister designated to brief the press, usually brief the press. Is that, is that an offense? What, what, what makes it a government secret? The allegation itself is frivolous and untenable. So you, by that you are saying that his removal is frivolous? No, 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 I didn't say it's frivolous. I'm saying the allegation itself is frivolous. But the deputy governor has the onus of appearing before the panel to rebut the claim. Let me tell you why it is frivolous. But the impeachment itself is not frivolous. I will tell you. Why is it frivolous? Why was the petition frivolous? Now, the, the affidavit he allegedly deposed to in the Federal High Court in respect to his fear that he will be impeached. That was why he went to the Federal High Court. Now, state actors, stakeholders, party members, even including clergy, they went into the matter to broker a peace between the governor and the deputy governor. And the outcome was that he should withdraw the process from court. And that there was no process of impeaching him. The deputy governor, acting on that reconciliatory uh, settlement, went to the court to withdraw the processes. And once you withdraw a process, the position of the law is that such processes no longer exist. Mm. It means that they have never existed because the court, apart from applying for, the, for them to be withdrawn, the court will also rule and struck them off. So if the court has struck off that process, including his disposition, can you now rely on that disposition to form an allegation against him, a thing that already been withdrawn from court? The process was made for a particular purpose, to prevent his impeachment. Now, people weighed in and he withdrew the process. How can you rely on that document again? A document already struck off. How can the House of Assembly rely on that document to now say that the man lied on oath to a matter of February? A document already withdrawn, struck off, no existing document? You can't rely on it. Okay. But unfortunately, I really know if the deputy governor was ill advised. The deputy governor would have gone to the panel. The panel was for investigation only and to make recommendation. And if the deputy governor has appeared, they would have given the committee a work to do. The end of Friday, if the deputy governor had presented a very strong defense, they would have been able to conclude their report by now. Because first, the document they relied on no longer exists by law, which they say it is supposed to. Two, it was in this it that the, the governor agreed that he should withdraw the process for them to, uh, up, to uh, impeach him. Because what he went to court for was he feared that he would impeach. Okay. And having been given the assurance that he would not be impeached, he withdrew the document, you now went to impeach him, and you now the same document already withdraw. Okay, I'll come back to you. We, we know the roles that the uh, former deputy governor, uh, Comrade Philip Shaibu, played, mm -hmm. you know, in uh, making sure that uh, there is a, a re-election, you know, of uh, his boss and himself, you know, in governance, and uh, all that he came with, his youthfulness, you know, his humor, and all of this. Do you see this as end of the road uh, for Philip Shaibo? And most especially as regards um, the way he was, uh, the way the issues unfolded, the events unfolded. Do you really think it would have degenerated to this extent, or what do you think it should have been? Um, let me say this. 
before NAM, I, I had the opportunity to sit with the deputy governor. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked over lunch for a very long period over these issues. His fears, his aspiration, and uh, so many other things. Mm -hmm. The details of that discussion by the rules of fiduciary relationship uh, that exists between the pastor, I will not disclose. Okay. But what I feel is that this is a matter that would have been settled and settled very amicably. He was worried that he was going to be a maltreated. Egged out. Yes. He was also willing that if there should be genuine effort at reconciliation and negotiations. And negotiations. He was very much open to that. He was ready for a compromise. Yes. I think that was why the issue of withdrawing the suit at the Federal High Court uh, also, also came in. Yeah. Then, uh, what I feel is that, let me give an instance, uh, because we must be very clear about these issues. It's about a, a do state. It's not about any individual. Yes, he had the right to aspire to be governor. And no one can take that right away from him. I'm an Issa man. I would love an Issa person to be the governor. But I know that the issue of timing uh, had to be looked at. So that one you know, on its own is not an offense. It's an issue that could easily have been settled. Then also, I believe that whatever Governor Basaki has achieved today, Shabu plays a part in it. And that must not be lost on anybody. And we cannot wish it away. Because if you are on the journey of eight years and somebody partnered with you for seven years, mm. Maybe along the line in the eighth year, there was a problem. Mm. Uh, that does not derogate from whatever contribution the person has made uh, to uh, any achievement that both of you, I will say both of them had. Mm. Uh, and I must commend the governor for one thing. You see, the governor, one of the problems in coming to the PDP was that the PDP was ready to accept him, but they had issues with Shaido. <laughs> but to his credits, he insisted that both of them should be accepted together. I think that was what delayed the governor coming to PDP. And eventually, uh, concessions were made on both sides, and Philip Shaido came. You see, we have to look at these issues side by side. Okay. The governor's magnanimity, uh, Schreiber's contribution to whatever success Obasaki has made today. You know, if out of eight years you partner together as Avelia said for seven years, then uh, if you even put seven over eight together, I don't think uh, it's been, anybody can deny him credits for the youthfulness he brought in his uh, humorous disposition and zest and then uh, the zest mm. achievements in sports mm. and then uh, the governor too offered him a very wonderful he was one of the if not the most popular deputy governor mm. in uh, at least the best known deputy governor in the country but that was because the governor offered him a free hand and a platform so that's why I believe that it's an issue that should have been resolved. Before I, I stop, let me uh, refer to one issue. That occasion where uh, Shribu wanted to come and meet the governor, mm. this was at the heat of the problem, and then efforts by where many Edo leaders to resolve it. A security detail prevented him. That was a public humiliation. 
not of Philip Shaibu, but of the office of the deputy governor. I do not know how helpful it was. The security detail might have been an overzealous one, but it might also have been under instruction. But wherever that instruction came from, I don't know how helpful it was. Now, this is what I would have expected the governor to do. The governor would have asked them to call him. And then let him see. He couldn't afford the governor in public. He was not armed. And then the security details were there. It would have resulted in, it resulted in fisticuffs. So, I mean, why preventing him? It was a, a, the psychological effect of all these things. There are gladiators on both sides. The governor's side, the former deputy governor's side. But I feel that that was, when we are trying to reconcile, that is not a very appropriate atmosphere, you know? And those kind of issues, they, they do not really give somebody confidence to say, I want to reconcile. So I feel those are issues, they are past anyway. Okay. Mm. Uh, from, from your perspectives, uh, mm. uh, you seem to suggest that um, mm. a law would have been done on the part of the governor to um, reconcile, bring an opportunity for the deputy governor to reconcile the differences. But don't forget again, we also have the issues of the Edo State House of Assembly. You know, or do you seem to suggest that the executive influence, you know, uh, dovetails to what transpired? Well, I think the, the very deep issues between them and the mishandling of some issues of both sides uh, might have led to what happened at the industry state that, because that did not happen in vacuum. Hmm. It didn't happen in vacuum. Uh, it was definitely because of the irreconcilable differences that that kind of thing uh, happened. Because we are looking for a peaceful Edo state. We do not want this state to turn to a battleground. And we believe that gladiators on both sides must warn themselves that if there is a conflagration and there is an implosion, that we will have no states. All right. to, to, to govern. Okay, thank you. Well, well let's get what he said. Uh, you heard it. And uh, you were saying before now that uh, he, he, he cannot, that he is wrong for, it's not the turn of the Edo North and all that you said. But don't you think from the position, uh, from the posture of his reaction, don't you think he wasn't really after, you know, uh, that if the fact that his ambition was thwarted uh, as a result of uh, his aspiration, but that the way he was treated at the party and um, his gestures to, you know, give room for reconciliation, but was somehow denied. Don't you think that could lead to why he is taking this position? And most especially as we've seen uh, the need for, you know, uh, governments not to ban dictatorial tendencies in you know, choosing a successor in the party. Well, 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 let me tell you, let me tell you. You see, what is playing out, whatever is happening now, or whether a person is being treated wrongly or rightly, Philip Shaibu is aware of politics. He's aware of this kind of treatment. As a grassroots politician? Yes, he's aware. This treatment of politics or treatment of person candidates is in existence, it's part of politics. He's aware. Let me give you an instance so that you appreciate what I'm saying. In 2018, in our East, a candidate has won primary elections. It's just to go and affirm the primaries. Philip Shaibu took Osigwe, Andrew Osigwe, to uh, Wanake to go and anoint Andrew Osigwe and let the, the local government headquarters where the candidates were waiting. Victor Josma was the candidate of the party. He was aware. Mm. The, the 40 House of Assembly members that were not sworn in. Philip Shadow was aware. He was one, one day, one, once a member of the House of Assembly. Then they said it was politics. He was aware. 
So the issue of treatment is part of politics. The other, that time, uh, Honorable Pani has uh, cried out that what they were doing in his local government was a fraud of democracy. Okay, but is it, is it justiceable? In, in politics, <laughs> in politics, it is justiceable. <laughs> because more often than not, those who are in the helm of power controls what happens in the party. He's part of this treatment. He knows it. So whether it is fair or not is part of politics. Okay, let's look at what this. What we only argued, yes. what we argued in his case was that he has played so well with the governor. And I am a student of literature. <laughs> there are principles of stool to cocker. Hmm? When you know that you have taken... Say that again. Stool to cocker. Okay. By Oliver Goldsmith, I read it. Mm. The governor, whatever you know, you take the governor for. Is the governor of the state? If you feel that your boss is angry, there's nothing uh, making it not for you to stoop to cocker. And you refuse to grab media uh, presence so that they will, you know, will be misconstrued. Go to the governor, appeal to the governor. Because they have played too well together. Okay, so, so to your mind, he didn't do enough. No, no, he did it. He did it. He would have stopped any media uh, comment in respect to the issue between him and the governor. I go to the governor and appeal to the governor. The governor is a human being. He can feel aggrieved. The governor could as well okay, accept him, but it's not impeached and all of okay, that. Okay, but don't forget at the time the governor also said that uh, it's, it's human to err, forgive to divine. Good. Uh, for, it's saying. divine to forgive, I mean. Yeah. And, and looking at what transpired then, Will not be as if let, let uh, will not be as if you are let, let, deliberately tempting the government. No, let me tell you. You see, Philip Shaibu in his statement said it is because of his political ambition. Why don't you sacrifice that political ambition for the friendship between you and the governor? If you have proof, you agree with his statement that he knows he's being withheld mm. or being fought by the governor. Because of the political ambition. Why don't you agree with the position of your principal? If the principal says, let it give to another person. If you really want to obey him, you go to him. Okay, since you have decided, you are my boss. I agree with you. Although I actually have an interest. But now that you have spoken, why don't you do that? I am of the view that the deputy governor ought to have take the part of the governor. Okay. Having lived so well together. If the man says, I want him to go to central, which a vast majority of us are saying. And you insist on that. It means you are not doing the part of the governor because the office of the governor and deputy governor has some they are meshed together, they are one. Okay, events have unfolded and they are still unfolding. Do you see this as the end of the road for right honorable uh, Philip Shaibo? You, you, you cannot determine the end of a man. <laughs> no, 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 I don't mean as in the end no, no, of a man. I'm you looking at I'm looking at his political career. No, 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 no. You can't also stop it. Mm. He's, a, he's a young man. He has a right to clear his name. He, ha he has before a right to clear his name. The before, fear, be before the call of law. My fear, which I have stated here, okay. is just that he made a, only a single mistake of refusing to defend himself, avail himself of the principles of rule of law. Right? Are you saying that would have turned the tides? Of course. Let me tell you, sir. I, 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 but, I, but, 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 but if it's a witch hunt, no, you may not. no, excuse me, sir. Let me tell you one thing I want to tell you. I know four of the panelists very well who are lawyers. The, the, the retired judge and at least three other lawyers who were in the panel. These persons are no nonsense. The governor can't even call them. House of Assembly speaker can't call them. So they would have been fair? They would have been fair. And I can tell you this, I can, I can say it anywhere that the, go the deputy governor made a somersault. You are saying they would have been fair. They would have been fair. Would they have been just? Would they have been fair to a point of going against the uh, actions of uh, the governor? No, no, no. They were not set up by the governor. That is the mistake. They were not constituted by the governor. Yes. They were constituted by the chief judge, judge of the state. That was a judicial panel. The, de the governor cannot, cannot interfere. And I know too well there. Four members there, if a governor calls them, they will retire. They will, they will resign their appointment. If the governor made a mistake, or even call them by proxy, four of them, they will resign their appointment. Mm. So the deputy governor... So he missed that chance? He missed the chance. That's the only thing I'm saying against him. If he have availed himself to be... Def and I say he has a strong defense. He committed no offense. I will say it anywhere. <laughs> the only mistake he made, 
was that he was ill advised not to avail himself to be defended. Mm. It was prejudicial for you to say that the panel of inquiry were trying you. They were not trying you. They were only investigation. They were only investigating an allegation made against you. Okay. You ought to have come okay. to defend yourself so that they will have a strong report to make. Now they didn't make any report. They only stated that you failed to appear. And what is the principles of law? The principles of law is that if you are aware of an allegation is made against you and you refuse to come and defend it, it means you have admitted your offence. Oh. It means you have admitted your offence. Being and the reason why the seven-man uh, uh, panel had to adopt the report. Yes. When you have presented a strong defense, and I'm telling you, sir, I, I can say it here, the panel would have been fair, just, and do the needful. And I can tell you, it's in, it's in the past now, he would have possibly been exonerated. Okay, thank you. It is just watching as this morning on ITV, and uh, we are all about Philip Scheibel's impeachment addressing the outcome. And uh, as we have it, uh, developments following has brought about the... Um, swearing in of a new deputy governor of Edo State from Akokwedo local government area. Talking about engineer or mobile marvelous Godwins. Godwins is in the name. <laughs> and so let's look at this. Uh, we have this where some have said that, well, uh, legally, uh, if the deputy governor is impeached uh, uh, and uh, in that regard, mm. Can he enjoy his entitlement that comes basically after his tenure, like the pensions, for instance, and all that? What do you think could be uh, the uh, traumatic or implications of that, Greg? I have never supported the issue of pension for political office holders. <laughs> because to me, you have people who work for 35 years, 40 years, of them, their pensions are not even being paid. But it has not been repeated in Edo State. Yeah. We only have that of Abia State. Yeah, uh, so yes. unfortunately, it still holds. Yes. But can he enjoy that? Well, I do not I do not know in the present circumstance with his impeachment whether he will, whether he would enjoy it. But I believe he served as deputy governor up to the points that he was impeached. So he didn't complete his tenure? So he might not have completed because basically tenure. if you are to enjoy such pensions it means you must have completed the tenure i don't think so oh. because would the present deputy governor would the present deputy governor who is going to stay for just about six years would he be entitled to uh, basically he may he may be well no, yes, no, you know you are legal practitioners no. and that's why we are here cannot this is a minimum state so let's look at it uh, so somebody stayed for about seven years and then someone will not get he was impeached even if he was impeached, up to the point of impeachment, he was legally or legitimately the deputy governor. Okay, but that aside, that aside, that point. Okay, but that aside, it does not mean that his seven years as deputy governor is obliterated from the political history of the state. So if somebody comes for six months and he gets it simply because uh, the race has uh, been and terminated and because and of uh, the constitution, it doesn't mean that he should. End it while the other one will not end. I don't think so. Okay, uh, well, well, that I think will be most unjust. It will be very unfair. Okay. Uh, and it will be like obliterating the seven years or plus that he has stayed as deputy governor out of the political history, which I don't think we can really do. Okay, but what about the political career? Do you see, it, do you see this as a dent? Um, well, what I want to say is that. In the do state, we need peace. I think someone like Philip Schreiber, eight years as a state legislator, about one year plus as a federal legislator, seven years plus as a deputy governor. That's huge. Yes. The political experience he has gathered should not be allowed to go to the wind. Uh, I, I, I foresee, I foresee that opportunity may beckon on him, no matter the present uh, circumstance. Yes, like I said, there might have been some issues about decisions he took or actions he took with timing and tactics. Okay. But that does not in any way mean that there is no future for him. I foresee that opportunity 
will beckon on him. Okay. Let's get your perspectives on the entitlements. If uh, it's terminated. Well, impeachment is a criminal offense. It's a criminal offense. Yes. That's why I pitched. Mm. It means you will not be entitled to any benefits. Entirely? Not. Yes, that's what the law says. It's, mm. a, it's a criminal offense. It denies you of, of pensions. But let me address the issue of pensions. The pension of governors, the uh, joy, is illegal. <laughs> now, the Pension Reform Act says that before you are entitled to pension, you must have worked for a minimum of 10 years. A governor spends eight years in the maximum. So it's not entitled to pension. They must have a period that long. Go, it's not a period. I said the Pension Reform Act. Okay. I'm talking about the current Pension Reform Act. Say that for you to be entitled to pension, you must have worked consistently for 10 years. There, there could be an act that's applicable to the offices of the law. They made a law at the Senate of Assembly. Yes. They made a law at the Senate of Assembly. It's a real thing. Yes. It's a challenge soon. Okay. It okay. will be challenged. At least we have that in Abia State. Yes. And uh, we just hope that it takes a, a replica effect. It will be challenged soon. Yes. It will be set aside. It's an illegal law. A power to the governor who spent eight years in the maximum to entitle to pension. If I work for eight years as uh, either the ministry, federal ministry, state ministry, will I be entitled to pension? Okay, but back to the subject. You said it's that it's a criminal offence to be impeached. It's a criminal offence. And you yeah, also said it. that the reasons or allegations brought against him that got him impeached yes. were really frivolous. frivolous so, 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 so how, how can he clear his name yes. if, if, if they are frivolous, that, that like was, you said? That was why I said he was in advice. Whoever told him not to defend that allegation. Does that end it all for his career? Of course. Career? Does that end it all for his career? No, he or tends, to clear his name he tends before to clear the judiciary, before the court? He tends to clear his name. The clearing of his name will come from setting aside the tribunal's, uh, the panel's decision or report. You can't set it out because you didn't defend yourself before then. Hmm. There's a danger. He already is not coming to defend himself. If he had come to defend himself, even if he's denied him, he, he, he means that he obeyed the doctrines of the rule of law. Mm. He presented himself and defended the allegation. Although they overruled him, he cannot appeal that decision having, having been overruled by the panel. Okay. But he not presenting himself at all. Is that he has admitted the, the offenses wholesale. Okay. Now, we have uh, a whole lot of lessons to learn. Politicians have lessons to learn in this. Yes. Uh, we have uh, a, a marvelous um godwin. or mobile godwins yes. uh, that is now the new deputy governor now what are your nudges what uh, is your counsel you know for politicians uh, in this and of course uh, as we gradually approach the election proper mm. uh, do you see this as uh, a setback for the pdp uh, that is basically still having issues of uh, litigations as regards uh, the party's flag bearer I, no, I do not see it as a setback for the PDP. But I believe that reconciliation is still possible. You know, after a fight between brothers, uh, which I see this one to be. Reconciliation uh, after impeachment? Yeah, uh, <laughs> no, no, when you say reconciliation, do you mean as in between the deputy governor, the former deputy governor, and uh, the. Uh, of course, oh. of course. It's very possible because. Philip Shabu is a member of the family. If not PDP, if not government, but Edo states. And we do not want, particularly as we approach the election, we do not want anybody to weaponize whatever bitterness he may have mm. you know, against the state. And we must be very careful and sensitive about this. Because sometimes we can know how a fight starts. But we don't know how it may end. Mm. So we need to reach out to everybody uh, that is feeling aggrieved, is, that is really feeling aggrieved, so that Edo State doesn't become a battleground, you know, during the election. Uh, we have had a good history. The last two elections have been very peaceful. So let us maintain that. And I think for the PDP, um, Collateral damage, yes, there is, but management of that of it is very, very important for them. Let them reach out to each other, and then when they reach out to each other, I believe there is nothing 
that cannot be settled. Okay. In, yeah. in, in 15 seconds, what's your advice for the new deputy governor, Omar Bayo Marvelous Godwin? Power is transit. Power is transit. Hmm. That's awesome. Okay, let's get your perspective as regards uh, PDP. Uh, do you see this as victory, the impeachment of the former deputy governor, uh, comrade uh, Philip Shaibo, as victory for the party? And uh, that will mean it will all go well, even community into a victory in elections? Uh, no, you know, I, I have stated in several fora that the impeachment was unnecessary mm. from the beginning. My position is that Philip did not commit an impeachable offense. I have stated it. My only worry was that why did he not go and defend himself? That was my that is my concern. So what's the impact on the, the election? Is that have on it, the it, party's it, it, um, it, uh, strategy? It, it will have a very strong impact on the party because as a negative 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 impact on the fortunes of the party in the state because the state is uh, with a lot of baggages. But I want to quickly say something sir, before I leave. What, what do you mean by a lot of baggages? There's a lot of baggages. For instance, the PDP led government denied the House of Assembly for two members of the okay, 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 okay. That's one. Okay. Two, as we speak, I the governor of the state, this. the governor of the state has denied eight judges to be sworn in. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Now, round, off, round off on that point. The state of assembly, I want mm. to urge them yeah. to commence impeachment proceedings against the governor in violation of section 172 of the 1999 constitution. That's not on this forum. No, uh, no, 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 We don't have the right, we don't have the right analysis to say this. No, 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 this, like, as you can see, Philip Shaibu's impeachment addressing our call. That's what we are after, not on the government. Excuse me, sir. So please, please, let's, let's not digress. Yeah, yes, sir. Round off on your point on the impeachment of Philip Shaibu. was impeached by the House of Assembly for infraction. I'm saying the government has infracted section 172 of the constitution. You said all the impeachment procedures they see. That's what I'm saying. We are talking about impeachment. What was the infraction? Infraction for refusal to swear in what eight, eight members, eight judges designate. The constitution says that upon the recommendation of those judges by the National Judicial Council, the governor shall, the word shall is compulsory in law, it's mandatory. If the governor has observed that position in the breach, Okay. I we, 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 we could have that in our subsequent discussion. The of impeachment mm. by the House of Assembly, it's an arm of government, is the legislature. They are the one that made the constitution. Now, if the deputy governor has breached the provisions of the constitution and is impeached, I am also saying now that the governor itself has also breached section 172. You said it several, you've articulated your point. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so you're your final, your final, your final word on this uh, discussion. Yeah, my final word on it is that the, uh, the, the deputy governor, uh, uh, just, just for you, is a young man. I think he's going to bring youthful disposition again, just like the former deputy governor has done. And we believe that it was for political constitution. Mm. In a way not, the two of them assembly in, in uh, Akuko Edo were won by the PDP. For, of course, uh, reaching out to them also okay. to approve them, they were given the position. So it's, it's a well deserved. Okay. What, what do you think would be missing in the uh, Philip Shaibu's uh, exit from the office? What do you well, think would be missing he, he, he loved, because, uh, uh, in governance? He, he, he has followers, he has his own men, he has his own disposition. All this will, will be missing. Okay. The relationship between him and the governor. Uh, the young man here cannot uh, match it to it. He, they were very good. Uh, well, uh, he's just starting. You can't tell. Uh, no, he presumptive. <laughs> he, he cannot. He cannot. It's not presumptive. Uh, the, 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 the deputy governor actually live very well with uh, the governor. That's why I was saying that he didn't do more to reconcile All right. himself with the governor. Thank you. Oh, your final words on this. Please. My final words. The issue of the 13 House of Assembly members. 14. 14. The governor, uh, the, they did not refuse to swear them in. They refused to be sworn in. Okay. They were invited so many times by the governor, by well many adolites, and they refused to go. Please, let's set the record straight. Okay, well, what's, what's your reaction over what he said concerning uh, calling the House of Assembly for the pitch better of the governor? <laughs> for the name judges, you were at the bar house at the last time. Yes, I was at the bar house. I think that's an issue that can be resolved without impeachment. Uh, exactly. Impeachment doesn't have to be the answer to everything. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Greg Iyayi, Reverend Greg Iyayi, who is also a legal practitioner, a fine legal practitioner. Thank a big you. thanks to you, seasoned legal practitioner again. Articulate at that level. Uh, Sunday, that will do. Uh, big thanks for taking our time. Uh, in spite of the distances, you people were able to make it uh, to the station. And good enough.
is public holiday. And so it is, we want to say, uh, back at the shout out to all our uh, PDF trade to our Muslim brothers and sisters. <laughs>